Well, um, the basis of this patch is the modulation network of these five LFOs and two submixers, one main modulation mixer, which uh, you will remember from chapter one. It's the preset uh, complex one in chapter one. So I have added two voices. Uh, the lower voice, voice is, I call it voice one, uh, consists of the sequencer, a quantizer, a basal as a sound as a generator, as a sound generator um, sent through a VCA modulated by an ADSR, sent through plateau as a reverb, as a reverb, and then into. Let me blow it up. Sent to mixer channel one. But I have to insert the modulation. Okay, so. The upper voice, voice number two, um, the kernel is uh, phase, the VCO phase are, and it's not um, fed by a sequencer, but um, by the uh, falling and rising slope of uh, output main output mixer here, the main output mixer which feeds the quantizer. Okay. Um, so the relation, the relation, what is, um, what is the first one I, I want to explain is that higher pitches here in this voice, in voice number two, higher pitches are related to uh, more partials, pa more partly inharmonic partials in the spectrum and lower pitches means less partials. To show this and demonstrate this and explain, I fade, fade out the lower voice and I remove the modulation of mixer channel 2, the channel where voice 2 is fed in, so that we hear it all, all the time. Uh, it's all about LFO1. LFO1, when we have a rising slope at LFO1, which is not neutralized by LFO2 here, I will say later a little bit about it, uh, because both LFOs are fed into the submixer one. So a rising slope of LFO1, which is not neutralized by LFO2, means a rising slope at the output of uh, submixer one, means a rising slope at the output of, of the main mixer, when only under the condition that this rising slope is not neutralized by the sub, the subnet um, LFO3, 4 and 5, which happens, yes, but very rarely because of the frequency relations which I have chosen here. So, let me repeat, rising slope of LFO1 means rising slope even here, means, here it is, means uh, higher pitches, higher notes, generated and quantized generated by, by quantum. Rising slope, higher pitches here. Okay, uh, but on, on this, um, at the same time as you see this blue cable here, which goes into the uh, waveform CV, so in the timber CV, and it's coming from submixer 1. So, meaning rising slope of LFO1 not being neutralized by LFO2 leads to a higher level of um, output level of submixer 1, leads to more partials here, because when I open open this this uh, knob, turn this knob to the left, to the right, which is increasing the CV here, um, then we get we get more partials, more and higher partials. Um, I said I would tell a little bit about why the cancelling out of um, LFO1 by LFO2 won't be audible. It happens from time to time again, but not that often, not that often because of the frequency relations again of these two. But um, it's, it doesn't matter at all because, and now let me feed in, let me patch back the modulation of mixer channel one. Um, this mixer channel one is modulated in the end by the square wave output here of LFO2. It goes with this green cable, you can't see it, it leaves the monitor here and comes in again. It's sent through a slew limiter to make the jumps a little bit more, more, more smooth. Uh, through a slew limiter 
into the CV, <coughs> into the CV of Mixer Channel 2, which is faded out and faded in in this time. When is it faded out? When, it, when does it go silent? It goes silent when the square wave jumps to low level. When does the square wave jump to low level? Well, when the triangle wave has reached its peak and goes down. So when the triangle wave has reached its peak and goes down, it potentially might cancel out the rising slope of LF01, but it doesn't matter because we don't hear it. Because when this happens, when um, the, the, the rising slope of LF01 meets the falling slope of the triangle of LF02, also the low level, um, uh, the, uh, um, the square wave jumps to low level and we don't hear anything. So the cancelling out by LFO, uh, uh, of LF01 by LF02 is not any, is not any important. Okay, so the next. Um, let me fade in all, again, all things again. So, this is voice number one. Um, but LF01 here modulates more. LF01 modulates also the key of LF02, so uh, of, uh, of voice uh, one. So, let me fade out LF, um, the upper voice here again so that we all listen. And here only this voice, voice one here below, and uh, the key is, as I said, is modulated by the triangle wave of LF01. This means more inharmonic partials of voice number two, which happens when LF, LF, LF01 gets rising, is at this rising slope. It means also, let's say, a rising key rising in the meaning from C to C sharp to D to C sharp uh, to D sharp to E to F. I think F is the highest what is reached here. Um, and we can see this here down here. I hope it's big enough in, if you have a nice monitor you, then it's okay. Well let me put this spectrum down here and then you see when we have higher spectra when we have uh, higher partials in this higher and more partials in the spectrum here the key jumps from C C sharp and so on up to F it's not completely 100% a one-to-one -one relation uh, because of the other modulations going on here um, but it's nearly all the time happening. You don't hear what you see here because what you see is the spectrum of the of voice number one. But I want, we are talking uh, voice number two here above. But we are talking about voice voice number one right now. Once again, here and here. When the level at the output of LFO3, let's now talk about LFO3, rises, the frequency of LFO4 rises as well, because LFO3 modulates the frequency here of LFO4. And with that rises the frequency of changes of the timbre in the spectrum uh, or, and or the spectrum of VCO1 here, basal, because the mod 1 is modulated by LFO4. So, rising slope of LFO3 means faster, higher frequency of LF, frequency output of LFO1 means faster changes of the, of the timbre, not more, not higher changes or the amount of changes higher, but faster changes. At the same time, um, oh, let me put it uh, uh, um, a little bit uh, more, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> a little bit more to say about this. Um, this f uh, increase, uh, this um, changes, they don't, they don't go back completely. Uh, they have a rising, rising base level because of the, let's say, uh, offset frequency of LFO four here. Um, so, LFO5, let's go to LFO5 now, and you see that 
the clock of the of um, uh, the bordel of uh, the sequencer here is modulated by or is comes from the square wave output of LFO5. But LFO5 is the frequency of LFO5 is modulated by LFO4 or by the combination LFO3, LFO4 as well. So the same LFO modulates, the, let's say, the speed or the rhythm. No, speed is part of the rhythm, um, the speed of uh, the clock of um, the sequencer and the spectrum of Basel. Once again, two sonic parameters which are normally completely independent are related to each other here. Well, let me fade in. Voice number two above here again and listen to it for a while. The system is, or the principle is, that we have two stable, const not constant, but stable elements here, these two melodies of, um, of uh, voice one and of voice two. The difference is that whereas voice one is permanently changing a bit, um, I will be silent in a minute and then you can listen to it better. And the voice 2 here is changes as well, but does not change from time to time when it's faded in to the next time when it's faded, when, when it's faded in. But the changes of voice, voice number 2 are audible and, and remarkable during the time where it is audible and not from time where it's audible to the next time where it's, when it's audible. The relation of um, phasing in and phase or fading in and fading out to the happenings which I explained with voice number one is random or pseudo random because of the frequency relations here. But I've talked about and written about and showed frequency relations enough in chapter one. So I'll be silent now. Thank you. 